Hey guys, we're in Southern California at Fullerton. This is Hillcrest Park and I can see why they call it that because we're right at the crest of the hill and I'm hanging out here with Wayne, founder of EG. Hi. And it stands for Evergreen, right? Yes. It's kind of a cool company. You've been around since, what, 2005? 2005. That's phenomenal, man. You know, one of your more popular models here is the Athens 350, but we're looking at the Kyoto 350 over there with this nice like satin paint job. It's kind of a blue gray. Is that what you call it? It's a titanium gray. Titanium gray, yeah. It does have like a metallic sheen. I really like yeah. that. Also comes in this satin black right here. Those are the two colors, only high step, and it's kind of a trail bike. It's a hard tail. Hard tail. With that suspension fork, about 100 millimeters of travel, SR Sun Tour. I'll get into some of the details when we get closer to it, but we rode over here from Sam's shop at the Electric Bicycle Center. Yep. And you've been carrying EG for a number of years, right? Uh, about 10 years. Me and Wayne were talking earlier, yeah. It's incredible. I haven't even been doing reviews for 10 years. This guy's been carrying this brand for 10 years and you're still doing it, so it must be pretty good. Yeah, he's got a good value and uh, great uh, support for the customer base as well. Excellent, excellent. And this is uh, what I would consider an affordable bike, more affordable. It's $14.99. And you might be like, that's not... I mean, you see stuff online that's cheaper, but not sold through a store where you have support, maybe not as uh, feature rich as this, the reliability question mark, things like that. So I'm gonna get into that, but I am gonna try to highlight areas where I feel that maybe they uh, compromised a little bit to save money. Um, I might just jump into that straight away with the pedals right here. These are the Welgo M248D. They get the job done, but these are cage style. That's how I refer to them. You might've seen larger ones where it's thicker aluminum. These can kind of get bent if the bike tips over. So thankfully they have a kickstand. The bike shouldn't tip over too much, but that kickstand is positioned right there at the middle of the frame, which means if you're backing this out of a garage or something, you can get what's called pedal lock. See how the, the crank arm on the left there, can, it makes contact with that kickstand and you have to kind of pick the bike up and, and roll it forward a little bit like this. And I'm using this pine cone to uh, just stabilize the bike. Um, you know, it helps to kind of keep this shot nice for you guys. One of the areas that they've upgraded from past models is with this 12 magnet sealed cadence sensor. See that right there? It's really nice. In the past, we had like a bigger one. You could see the magnets and it was sometimes on this side and it just could get bumped out of position. And so I love that many, many companies, including EG are going to the sealed cadence sensor. Not quite as advanced as like a multi-sensor where it's measuring torque and cadence and speed, but still 12 magnets, not too bad. And they've chosen well on that. This bike does have trigger throttle as well with override at all levels of assist. And I'm gonna get into the display a little bit later. So you've got throttle, you've got pedal assist. It goes up to roughly 28 miles per hour. So this is also a speed pedelec, which is very unique for kind of a mountain bike. And again, I called it a trail bike earlier because it's not full suspension. This is not an air fork. We don't have a tapered head tube here. This is an inch and an eighth straight, but it does have a 31.8 millimeter clamp, um, very much like mountain bike parts up here. But then take a minute just to look at this. See how they've got the kind of the steering column. It goes up pretty high right here. We've got all these spacers. There's like six 10 millimeter spacers and one five millimeter. You know, that's, it's interesting choice, right? There are some companies that have like an adjustable angle stem or big sweat back bars. I think by rising the stem here, it gives you a little bit more of an upright comfort position, which I actually like, but they have a 110 millimeter stem here. It puts it out further. So it's kind of a compromise. You're sort of upright, but you're sort of leaned forward. You could easily get a shorter stem or even like a steeper stem and, and make this more upright and relaxed, which I would actually probably do if I was riding around town or if I was more petite. If you're a taller rider, this is gonna work fine. The frame only comes in one size 19 inches and that's the seat tube right here again only high step and that makes room for the battery pack right here this is externally mounted and it's kind of connected to the frame you see how big this is and then there are a couple bolts right here it does rattle around a little bit and it's not quite as sturdy feeling and tough as the semi-integrated batteries or the fully integrated ones but it's much better than a rack battery and while we're on that topic you can see that there are bosses right here for adding your own rear cargo rack so this would be a really good like college student bike because you could ride off road a little bit if you want to but then during the week going to class put the rack on the back and you won't have to wear a backpack like me and make your your back sweaty and your neck kind of stiff so again really interesting choices here sort of semi-commuter but also trail capable 
We do have lights, they are not integrated, which means they run off of this one, two AA batteries, this one, two AAA batteries. You could easily take this off and, you know, again, for mountain bike riding, it's gonna save some weight and it might not fall off as easily. They require you to physically press the button like that to turn them on and then to turn them off. This one has uh, solid mode and flashing mode, which is kind of cool. And this one, it just has solid mode and you can kind of adjust it like this. But when you're parking at the bike rack, you might have to take it off each time because it's, it's connected with just like a rubber band sort of thing and someone could swipe that pretty easily. Keep that in mind. You'll also notice that the cockpit's kind of busy, okay? And that's because this is a 27 speed. I mean, that's incredible. Like a lot of electric bikes are going one by, meaning one chain ring and then a cluster of gears in the back. This one has nine sprockets in the rear and three up front. So again, three times nine, 27. And that means you've got trigger shifters on the left and on the right. These are fairly nice. This is Shimano Alivio. It's got the little window. It's got two-way action on the high lever and multi-shift on the low lever. So we come back here again. I think this is 11 to 32 teeth. That's a pretty good spread. And then up front, there's, I, you know, to be honest with you, I kind of forgot the, the numbers. I was recording those on the website. There's a lot to remember about this bike. And the idea is that at a many, many speeds, whether it's climbing and really slow lumbering along or higher speed, the 28 miles per hour we talked about, you're gonna have a pretty comfortable cadence rate because there are so many gear options, but that's a lot more shifting. It's a little bit more weight because there are two derailleurs, a little bit more to fiddle with over time as those cables stretch and keep the bike tuned up. There is a barrel adjuster right here and they also have barrel adjusters up here on the trigger. So you can usually turn to the left and it's gonna stretch that cable housing and that matches the stretch in the cable itself. And that, that's how you can keep this tuned up yourself without going to a shop. So anyway, you know, it's a little bit more complex, a little bit more weight, 52.5 pounds for this entire bike right here, 8.5 pounds for the battery. This is using just generic lithium ion cells. They're 2,600 milliamp, and you've got a 48 volt, 13 amp hour pack. That's pretty good. But again, just the way it's mounted, the weight is low, it's center, but it's, it's just kind of bolted on versus some of the newer bikes where it looks a little bit more integrated. If you look at this frame with that titanium kind of silver and everything, I love how it's fork matched here, especially considering this is a suspension fork. And here's some of the adjustments we talked about. There's the speed lockout, that's a hydraulic lockout and preload, so you can preload that spring if you're someone who's a little bit heavier. 30 millimeter stanchions, roughly 100 millimeters of travel. We do have quick release up front and we have hydraulic disc brakes with adjustable reach and this nice motor inhibitor feature. So anytime you pull those, cuts power, which is very nice to have if you actually go off road because cadence sensors just aren't as responsive as torque or multi-sensors. 180 millimeter rotors is, is great, especially because these are 27.5 inch tires, okay? So the wheel size on this is one step up from 26, but a step down from 29. It's actually a really good fit. It lifts the bike up a little bit. It lowers the tack angle, so you're gonna have a nice smooth ride. And these are rated 650 by 52B. I'm trying to find the, um, the other indicator here. Maybe it's on the other side because I like to do inches. So it's like 27.5 by, what is it? 2.1, Sam's giving me help back there. Kenda small block eight. They don't have reflective sidewall stripe or puncture protection. So do be careful. You can get a thorn in these and get a flat a little bit easier. 13 gauge spokes, extra sturdy here, 36 hole. Pretty good, you know, that's, that's supporting that motor right there. 350 watt nominal, 500 watt peak. Planetary gear, there's a little bit of zipping just because it's, uh, you know, it's a geared motor. And maybe the controller and stuff could be a little bit more generic. Just like I said, the battery cells are a little bit generic. The lights are generic. You're, but at least you're getting all of those in a bike that's at that $1,500 price range. I mentioned before that, you know, the battery pack is a little bit more visible, but if you get the black frame, it ties in a lot nicer. So you can see how it, it, it just blends in. All the cables and everything blend in, but they aren't really internally routed across the frame. So if you're someone who has a car rack and you take that battery off so you can hang it off the back of your car, the car rack's gonna be resting up against those cables, could kind of push against the frame or stretch them out. Just keep those things in mind. You know, it is a little bit harder to work on bikes where you have fully internally routed cables. This one's sort of partial. And again, you have two derailleurs. So there's just, there's more going on. That's the point I'm trying to get across. And in the back, no quick release because it's a hub motor. We've got that 12 millimeter axle with the flats. We call that keyed. So it sits into the kind of that dropout position. And then they have those big bolts right there that you tighten down. Do be careful. 
Um, when you, if you ever do lay the bike down, if that kickstand's down, lay it on the non-drive side because you've got those two derailleurs and we've got these extra cables sticking out, including the motor power cable. You don't want to get that snagged or broken because then you're going to ruin the motor. So that's a pretty good kind of a walk around of the bike, things that I noticed. I do want to call out that it's got an on-off switch built directly into that battery pack as well as a full-size USB type A charging port. So you could maybe use this if you're having a picnic or you could you know, plug something in while you're riding. There's not a lot of room in the cockpit for adding your phone, mounting a GPS, and we already kind of have the lights. So you're pretty much taken care of. I just look at this as maybe battery backup power, maybe in your dorm room or at work or something like that, you could charge your phone. I think it's five volt. I don't know if it's 500 milliamp or a full amp, but we do have a, a little charge level indicator right there. And then the charger itself, it's about 1.6 pounds, two amp charger. So it's gonna take, you know, six to eight hours to fully charge that battery because it is fairly high capacity nice metal end piece so it's not gonna crack as easy if you drop this thing toss it in your backpack or whatever I'd call this very like standard um, some of their other models have a little faster chargers but again they're trying to hit that price point on this bike so they made some compromises when I look at the frame the color matching the minimalist graphics the long-standing heritage that EG provides and the fact that they do sell through a number of dealers so you get that customer support you know that's that's what stands out to me about this bike there's some, some unique choices here. Like I talked about the spacers here, even these grips, kind of this ribbed rubber flat, almost like a BMX bike, but they are locking, so they're not gonna twist on you. Uh, it's really interesting to see like some areas where they've really gone with higher end stuff, like Alivio, that's several steps up. There's like Turney, Altis, Acera, Alivio, Dior. So it's like four levels up, that's nice stuff. Good trigger shifters. Part of me is like, do you really need 27 speeds? But then again, this is kind of an active bike. You can turn the battery off. You can even take the battery off and this is still a fun bike to ride around. The battery does rattle a little bit. So on our way over here, I could hear it like just the plastic uh, rattling a little bit. You know, kind of a cheap flick bell, a cheaper display, um, kind of unbranded. It reminds me of the King meter displays, but I turned on the backlighting while we were back at the shop because it was a little bit dark in there. And it has this like bright blue glow instead of like a faint gray or like yellow or white glow so the blue it's, it's just a little bit more jarring to me blue is like on the spectrum like i think it's a higher wavelength and it's just it, it kind of like interrupts your eyes more than like a red so minor thing no usbs up here or anything if you did want to try to charge while riding i would highly recommend a ride angle usb adapter from amazon so that while you're pedaling your legs are going right right near this you don't want to kick that so do be careful but at least it locks to the frame very easy to take that off I highly recommend charging in a cool, dry environment. Try to keep that battery between 20 and 80% to maximize the lifespan. If it's really hot, like today's kind of a warm day. If you park this outside and the battery's in the sun all day, that can shorten the lifespan. So it's nice that it comes off fairly easily that way. And again, the, the display, not removable. Uh, it could, could take, so, take a kind of some sun damage or some, some rain damage and stuff. They're designed to be water resistant, but again, this is a, is a bit of a cheaper display that they've chosen to try to keep that price point down. So I'm gonna go ahead and press the power button, actually mode, hold it for a couple seconds. We have turned the battery pack on already. Make sure you do that. Again, very reachable and even the plugging port, it's not down here where all the drivetrain is, it's up here, it's very reachable. We've got a six bar battery indicator, starts in assist level one. That throttle is hot at all times. So be careful, because as soon as you turn the bike on, it could take off on you. And it's, again, you kind of have to get used to this. Look at how we have to reach pretty far to get the up and down and mode buttons. You have to reach all the way across that, that clear, like, shifter indicator readout. Over here, they've put the trigger throttle before the trigger shifter, so then you have to reach a little farther to shift. That's just, those are the trade-offs when you've got this much going on. So we're in level one, but we could take it to zero, in which case it's throttle only, and you've got that nice display all the way up to five. Speed in the middle, miles per hour. We've got total distance. If we press mode, we've got trip distance. And so that's kind of it. I think if we hold the up arrow, I'm gonna to try to block this with my shadow. There's the blue, and I don't know if you can see that, but it is kind of a blue backlight. And then we've got that headlight indicator, but again, these lights are not wired in. So make sure you turn them off after each ride and maybe even take them off so no one steals them. If we hold the down arrow, I believe that gives us walk mode. There we go, yep, and that's nice if you get a flat tire or maybe you're going through a park and you don't wanna 
just be rude, you know, riding your bike. It's sometimes it's nice to get off, but not have to push the 52 pound bike. Uh, and then I think if we hold the, I don't know if we hold mode button. Oh, that turns it on and off. Holding up and down is what does our settings. And there weren't a ton of settings, if I remember. Yeah, so 48 volt. I don't know what that one is. Speed, miles per hour, or kilometers per hour. I'm gonna leave it in miles per hour. There we go. Yeah, so there's four different menus. I'll have a little bit more information back at the website. And I held mode again instead of up and down, so it turned the display off. I think that's a pretty good overview of the bike. I want to come back over here and, and give these guys a chance to say anything. Sam, you know, how long have you been carrying the Kyoto and who buys this thing? This is a fairly new model. We ha we've ha haven't had it a year now, but it's mostly, um, you know, it's the guy that wants a macho looking bike. There's a lot of affordable price bikes that look like uh, cruisers or comfort bikes. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Awesome bike over there. We'll do that one next. But for this bike, it's like uh, maybe somebody that wants to commute to work and they want a fast bike. Again, it's a value price bike that is a class three. So when you get yeah. to pedaling on this thing and you're hitting 25 miles an hour, you can close that distance a little bit closer, uh, fa faster rather. Very well said. The fact that it has the throttle, it's got the class three performance. I think the throttle only goes to 20 miles per hour, right? That's correct. Yeah. So you're, that's really that class three standard with throttle addition. Um, you know, the, the drivetrain is really interesting. You've got all those extra gears, but you don't really need the gears at all. You can just use that throttle. Even if the chain broke or something, the throttle works and you're not gonna get any mashing the way that you would with a mid-drive. And so it's a good good choice that way. My opinion is it's 350, it's not a 500 watt. There's some competitors that sell their bikes around the $2,000 price point and they have a 500 watt. So it's got better torque for hill climbing. Now this bike's fast on the flats when you hit those hills though, not bad to have those extra gears to gear down and be able to help along in the right gear ratio. That's true. Sometimes yeah. you're like trying to go fast and you're like, you're going so, so, you know, you can't keep up. <laughs> so it's nice to have those gears. Um, Wayne, do you have anything to add or, you know, I was just going to hop on the bike. Not much else. Cool, cool. Well, <laughs> thank you for riding out here. It's nice to see the bikes back to back. I'm just going to hop on this one and do some circles in the grass awesome. real quick. This is a, this is a perfect environment for testing this bike because it's sort of light off-road. I turn it on, it boots up. We got half of a battery here on this one. Assist level one, the throttle gives you full power at all levels of assist. So here we go. I'm gonna start off with pedal assist to show you how responsive it is. I'm gonna go to level five because that's the most uh, powerful. feeling pretty good and not too noisy right now. You know, we are on grass, so it's sort of, you know, there's a little bit of chop, like right here. You can hear some of that battery vibration that I was talking about there. But for the most part, it, it works pretty well. You know, it feels very comfortable with those Kenda small block eight tires, 2.1 inch. There's enough stability and enough tread that I'm not feeling like I'm slipping out. Now I'm gonna do the throttle. We're making it up to like 15 miles per hour here in the grass on the flats. I weigh 135 pounds, so it's not really pushing this thing super hard, uh, but it, but it's satisfying, right? So you know, if you're a larger rider, you probably want to pedal for this thing and get get some momentum, and then the motor, especially a hub motor, then it starts to hit its like optimal RPM. Uh, so yeah, hey, maybe uh, we can just hop on the bikes and ride together and head back towards the shop. Sounds good. That cool. Get a little on-road footage. And I often leave that that front gear in the second gear right there, just because, I don't know, it gives me, there's still nine gears, and that one's the most comfortable for me. But then, you know, that, that front derailleur almost acts as like a chain keeper, so the chain's not gonna fall off as easily. And it, it keeps your pants kind of from touching that first sprocket, but they could still get snagged a little bit or greasy. So keep an eye on that. I often ride bikes like this that have multiple chain rings with like a, a little ankle band, so it keeps my pants from getting getting caught and getting messy. Very nice. And keep an eye on that rear light, because if you add a rear rack, yeah, maybe put a trunk bag on it, then that rear light's gonna get blocked. Oh yeah. Beautiful. This guy was born to ride. No hands, putting the helmet on. 
Gotta love that. I'm gonna shift some gears here, guys. So I like that it has that two-way shift. Got the 180 millimeter hydraulic brakes. So you can brake one-handed like I'm doing here. Hit that stop sign. And then I think we're going this way. There we go. Looking good, buddy. Very nice, very nice. Here, let's pull over just right up here, Sam. We can kind of do the outro. Oh, are you gonna go down that? Oh my gosh, if I can. Oh boy. Nicely done. Nicely done. I wonder if Wayne's gonna be able to follow us. Did we lose him? I think we have to go back and get him. <laughs> High five, dude. All right, right on. <laughs> Achievement unlocked. There he is. There he is, he's like yeah. riding back and forth. Guys, I think that's about it. That's the, the full review for you on the EG Kyoto 350. It seems like a pretty good thing. You know, I was definitely like, I'm trying to be objective here and, and talk about the trade-offs, but for the price, you know, you've got a decent bike and some good support. For the full written review, I'll see you back at electricbikereview.com. Have fun out there, ride safe. I love you guys. We'll see you next time. Right so, on, Court. Thanks.